I'm here in beautiful Longmont, Colorado, which is named after Long's Peak. It's also the home of the first JC Penney, and it's home to Diabase Engineering, who's brought me out here today to introduce and show you their new H-Series machine, which is capable of leveling up the way you make and create. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. As with any good idea, we have to start with some history. And this is the H1. It's the first prototype or proof of concept for the footwear printing idea. The bed moves in X and Y and the turret moves in Z. The turret's really heavy with four different flexing extruders. And so they didn't want the weight being thrown around on X and Y with the Z. It just goes up and it works really well. And off to the side is the nozzle cleaning device. It was a great proof of concept, and to this day, I'm told it still works, but like any good idea, this was just the start of an evolution. After the H1, they created the H2. Same basic principle, but it's completely different. You have the bed that moves in X and Y still, but the turret was rotated 90 degrees and a fifth flexing extruder was added. And this means that the nozzle cleaning system could be held back in the arm. There's also a filament cabinet up top, which is heated and humidity controlled. They moved the electronics to the top and added a touch screen at eye level when it's on a table for ease of use. And again, just like the H1, this proof of concept still works to this day, but they weren't done. You saw the H1, you saw the H2. This is now, you guessed it, it's the H3. It's a cleaned up version of the H2, very, very similar. They did add some bellows covers because this is running a ball screw. And if your hand gets caught in there, it's gonna actually chop off fingers. They figured that wasn't a good thing, so they covered that just to keep you safe because safety first, kids. We still have the turret rotated 90 degrees. We still have the five extruders. We have the bed that moves in X and Y, and we have the turret on the arm that moves in Z. And in this configuration, very standard 3D printing configuration, but because these are all flexing extruders, it's incredibly good for footwear because you can print with five different materials. Anything super flexible, anything like PVA supports, you end up with something that's massively customizable. In this configuration, the Z-Probe is in effect, so you do get auto-leveling of the build platform. A latching turret provides very accurate tool changes and gets the inactive nozzles clear of the print straight away. Five flexion extruders allow the printing of everything from rigid materials to the ultra-flexible materials. And this is great because in this configuration, you may have a need for mixed material prints where you have hard and soft regions of the shoe. You may have a need for multicolor, where you're printing with the same material, but you need different colors of the material. And of course, this works incredibly well when you need dissolvable supports. And once the print is done, all you have to do is add some stylish fabric straps, put some knots in the bottom, and you yourself have a highly customized flippity flop. Perfect for summer. Another configuration of the H3 is to swap out the traditional bed and insert this. This is a horizontal rotary axis bed. And essentially what you do now is, is print as it spins and it allows you to create things that traditional normal 3D printing just couldn't create or would have a very hard time doing. In this configuration, you have a cylindrical print bed and that means you are printing parts from the inside out. The tool changer allows you to use dissolvable filaments for rafts, so parts are easier to remove. And finally, you gotta have to remember these layers are cylindrical. This means the thermal stresses act inward on the part, so bed adhesion and warping are not an issue, and the resulting parts, they're stronger. And the parts from this process end up looking amazing, and there's no way you would be able to get stuff like this as clean on our traditional 3D printer. In fact, look at this boot for, a, for like a CV joint. They've cut away the sides so you can kind of see, but because this was printed on a cylindrical bed, you don't have to use supports, and it's flexible material, and it just works great. I think a cylindrical bed is something that's really going to change the game of 3D printing when it's accessible to more people like this. A third configuration of this H3 is scanning. 
So you remember this, I just showed you this. This is that custom flippity flop. And in order to make it custom, you do need a model of your foot. So enter this kinetic sand base. What you can do is push your foot into the sand and then this laser scanner uses lasers pew, 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 to scan the indentations in the sand. And that can be brought into computer software to then have a model of your foot, which you can then use to create the custom model of your flippity flop. In this configuration, you make an imprint in some material. And we're showing you sand. It doesn't have to be sand. But this is ideal because let's say it's your foot. This imprint is your foot under load and not just a scan of your foot. The laser then accurately converts that impression to a usable digital file. Then you can just adjust that file, such as raising the arch, and quickly make solids in Fusion 360. And that way there's no messing around with STLs or difficult to manipulate files. There's also a rotary scanner available, which means you can make things such as custom hand grips or anything else your heart desires. Obviously, feet aren't the entire answer. I was able to put a handprint in there. I tried to go for a high five, but my hand's a little too wide. Other applications for sand imprints could be anything that your imagination desires, and then you just add fabric and it's good for summer. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is a great idea because the same machine can then scan something you can then model it, and then you can print it using the same machine. Now over to this H3, it's a little bit different of a configuration because it's set up for not just additive manufacturing, but milling. So there's a plate in the back that's really strengthened up the, uh, the whole machine in general. There's bigger bearings and there are ball screws on X and Y. This also means that there's a bellows cover down below because they don't want you chopping off your fingers on X and Y as well. There's additive and subtractive heads right up there and there's this nice cover which actually keeps things pretty clean. Let's take this off. I didn't break it, side panel. There we go. Having a machine capable of additive and subtractive really gives you an interesting way of working a piece. What you can do is print with over extrusion, which really is going to increase your layer bonding, give you an awfully strong part, and then switch to a milling tool head and mill the part out from the enlarged part you had just printed. In an additive and subtractive manufacturing configuration, you really get some cool features. The TPU bed adhesion allows you to print with ABS and it keeps it from peeling up because that TPU just grabs on and flexes slightly, but it keeps it from peeling. It keeps the peel from starting. That's awesome. You print slightly oversized with ABS and you do this with a large nozzle, it allows you to print really fast. And then you do it with higher than normal temperatures and you over extrude just slightly, which gives you a strong part. Now we get to the milling part of it. We can use a ball end mill to give the surface a nice smooth finish. A flat end mill allows us to cut accurate pockets and really sharp edged features on the part. And that slitting saw can be used to undercut features like cutting away support structures at the end of the print or cutting the print away from the base. And finally, don't forget, this is a turret tool changer, which means you can switch back and forth between additive and subtractive processes during a build for tall parts or small parts or all parts. What you end up with is a part that looks like this. And I'm honest to goodness, it's incredible actually holding this part. The feel in my hands is like nothing I've ever felt before from a 3D printed part. This was ABS and using a milling head, it formed the part, it did the fillets, it did the holes. It's, it feels like an injection molded part and it doesn't feel like ABS that's been vapor smoothed. It doesn't feel like ABS that's been sanded and painted. It feels like a 100% injection molded solid part. And for getting that from additive manufacturing, I think is the end goal for a lot of users, which is why it sounds really valuable to have additive and subtractive on the same machine. Another configuration of this H3 is when you swap out what was there and you add a horizontal rotary access. But unlike before where it was a spindle, this is actually a frame that can grab your part from either side. And this is very important because it means you can build your part out from the center, which means you reduce the need for support materials or you could easily mill PCBs with this. It just flips around and it lets you work on either side with any of the five tool heads. In this configuration, a flat ABS stock is clamped into a rotary axis fixture. The stock itself acts like a consumable print bed. 
The material is milled away, leaving an outline of the part held in place with tabs, and then material can be added and subtracted in successive steps on either side of the part. Because the starting solid stock of ABS is included in the final part, that part can be of higher strength than a standard print. At the end of the process for this one, you're left with this part. This was milled from a solid piece of ABS and then flexible material was printed on either side. This is a seal and this is a button. And the reason that's cool is because then you add it to the piece from before and you have yourself a headlamp, that's great. So with the integrated electronics inside and the PCB that you milled on this machine, all you do is hit this button in the back and with the light, it'll shine bright and you'll see your way, even in the dark, dark woods when you go hiking. I had a really good time here at Diabase today. Uh, I got to see uh, the incredible history of these machines with the H1, the H2, and then finally the H3 and the different configurations. We were actually able to showcase custom footwear like this flippity flop, where we took the scan of a foot to create the indentations and then added fabric to make a fully functional part. We were also able to create a headlamp using ABS that was milled using a, a mill bit and then printed flexible material for the seal and the button on the back. Diabase with this machine is trying to create functional, professional looking finished parts and I think they're really onto something. This machine feels like it's gonna change the game, allowing you to create not only more functional parts, more sellable items, but to do it faster, to do it better, and to use techniques that allow you to create a better finished product for your customer. And just think, with this machine, you could create yourself a 3D printed sole for a custom shoe that you sell in your shop on Etsy, or in your store in the mall, or at some major brand retailer. But for now, I gotta get going. I had a lot of fun. A big thanks to Diabase again for bringing me out and sponsoring this video. If you like anything that you saw here, there's gonna be links down in the description for you to get all the information you want about these machines. I highly suggest you take a look, get more information, and make more stuff. That's it for now. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five. See ya.